Yeah, hi there. These comments are for KL, and I am Michael Buckoff, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. Uh, you're one of my online TOEFL course students, and you completed the TOEFL pronunciation pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. So I've already listened to part A. I'm getting ready to listen to part B as you answer these personal experience questions. So here are my comments so far. The lessons you want to focus on the most here are lesson number eight, lesson number nine, lesson number 10, 11, lesson 16, 17, 18, 19, lesson 23, and also lesson number 24. So these are the lessons I think you need to spend more time on based on your weaknesses right now with your intelligibility. However, go through all lessons at least one time. Now, as you're doing the practice, you're not just listening to me. I want you to read out loud the practice exercises. Even read out loud everything that I say in those videos. It's all captioned. Now, what I want you to be careful about is in addition to these problems here, I want you to pay attention to your medial and your final consonant sounds and also make sure you're pronouncing consonant clusters. For example, the word question. You might say question instead of question. So just be careful those and also with the TH sound, you want to make sure when you're forming that sound, you're, you're putting your tongue in between your teeth, you're saying like thigh, thigh, breath, breathe, and you pronounce it that way. Okay, so let's continue on. So you're now going to answer these personal experience questions, and also when you get done, I'm going to give you an intelligibility score so you can kind of see where you are. Okay, here we go. The educational background is that I graduated from pharmacy university in Vietnam um, with bachelor degree and uh, after that I completed my master degree in pharmacy. Don't forget those S endings, my master's degree. In, and then I work for uh, a pharmaceutical company named AstraZeneca. Um, then in five years, uh, then I moved to the United States in 2002. And then from that time until 2014, I'm staying. Notice 2000, so 1000. Uh, you want to put your tongue between your teeth and say 2000. Home to take care of my three children. Then, uh, Again, say three, three children. When my children go to school full time, I have time for myself and I decide to take a pharmacy if foreign graduated. All right, so here's a tip, the tip of the day for you. You have three children who are attending school here in the United States. So what I want you to do is, I want you to read the children's books with them, or read books, however, whatever age they are. Uh, I want you to have them help you with your pronunciation. So you're reading like a paragraph, and then have one of your kids help you and correct you when you're reading that paragraph. I'm assuming your kids probably speak like native speakers. Uh, you do not, but you can learn a lot from your children. Your children are good resources for you to help you improve your pronunciation of American English. Equivalency examination, and I passed the exam. In you want to say, I passed the exam. You need to pronounce that P with a lot more air. 2014, and then I work for a pharmacy in a hospital located downtown Chicago. So located in down, downtown Chicago. Um, until now. And then I still practice TOEFL to, um, to qualify for the uh, pharmacy certification. I would probably use present perfect, no, present progressive there. I am still practicing TOEFL right now as I get ready for. 
um, to me, uh, it's very this is very important to improve my speaking and pronunciation abilities of American English because uh, I, uh, people can understand me easier and uh, I don't feel embarrassed when I speak English. You say embarrassed. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, you're doing a good job here. However... Uh, I've been teaching TOEFL now since about 1994, and and students who come from Vietnam have the most difficulty with their intelligibility. This is very tough. Now you've actually you speak a lot better than a majority of Vietnam Vietnamese speakers who live currently in the United States. A lot of them they have nail salons and stuff. You can't understand anything they're saying. I can understand a lot of what you're saying, but your accent is very strong. Now, your non-native speaker accent is really strong. You can overcome some of these issues. Now, you will always have a non-native speaker accent, but the goal here is to get your pronunciation and intelligibility at a level where it's not distracting. And remember, as a, as a pharmacist, in this kind of situation, you will be working with a lot of elderly people, elderly people who need medication for their illnesses. And then you need to give them instructions on how to use that medication, right? So elderly people don't hear very well in the first place. And a lot of elderly people, they're not used to talking to non-native speakers. So it's going to be harder in those cases. So it's more important for you than in most, in most other situations to be able to speak as clearly as you can. And that'll make it very easy for your customers to understand what you're saying. And um, that's it. And uh, I hope to do this course, I can achieve. You take their word, I hope to. Notice that long vowel, that ooh, to discuss, to discuss. My TOEFL score, which uh, the requirement is very high. How about the TOEFL score or the TOEFL exam? I would say not which. I would say whose requirement is very high. So in that case, you can use that possessive relative pronoun, whose requirement means the TOEFL's requirement or the TOEFL exam is really high. Something like that. So I would probably use who's there instead of which. Okay, so the next thing now is uh, KL. I'm going to give you what's called an intelligibility score. So obviously, you have a lot of pronunciation distractions which make it difficult for the listener. You sometimes have language use issues when you're communicating, which also can cause trouble with your uh, intelligibility. And you want to be really careful about final and, and uh, medial consonant sounds. That's very, very important for you. And that's part of what I will do as you do your speaking and pronunciation practice and you send it to me by email, I will be paying close attention to that. So you got to work hard. And the main thing for you, use your children as a resource. That means speak to them in English right now. Right? Tell them, say, hey, I need to work on my English right now. So this is very important, so don't be tempted to speak in Vietnamese right now. Try to really focus a lot on English, and then read with your children every day. Read books with them, and you read a paragraph. They help you correct it. You can have them read a paragraph, and so on. So get as much of this kind of interaction as you can each day, and gradually you will begin to reduce your non-native speaker accent. You will start to speak a little more naturally, but it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. And like I said, people from Southeast Asia, Thailand, also Cambodia, Vietnam, these particular languages are very difficult when these speakers have difficulties when they're trying to learn English because the languages are very, very different in their tone and also in their pronunciation patterns. So these are things that you have to get used to. All right? And uh, thank you for doing the pretest.